employee of the government-owned NBN participated uh, in this raid. And worse, that that employee of a government-owned entity uh, took photos and transmitted them to NBN Co. Uh, and I want to say this to the federal government. Come clean on this. Uh, tell us who those photos were sent to, uh, who has, still has copies of those photos. Tell the Australian people uh, if any of those photos were provided to ministers or ministers' offices, uh, because clearly uh, that has been uh, utterly inappropriate. The second uh, set of facts we now see today uh, is the explosive uh, admission, explosive admission by Mitch Fifield that he did know, after all. He did know about the AFP investigation. So uh, a day and a half after uh, the, this, this matter became public, we finally have the Minister for Communications admitting to the Australian people he did know about the investigation the police were undertaking, not because the police had spoken to him, apparently, but because NBN Co had. The government-owned company had told him about it. Well, it's time the government came clean on this. It's time the government came clean on this. It's time the government fessed up to everything that ministers and their officers knew about this investigation, because it's clear from the statement from Mitch Fifield uh, that there is more to be said. There is more to be said. And I want to uh, uh, turn now to what the Prime Minister said just a short while ago. Mr Turnbull was asked a number of questions about what he knew, about what his office knew, and when they knew. Well, he dodged them. He dodged them. Uh, he dodged questions put to him by the media, legitimate questions about what his office knew about this investigation. I just want to be clear about this. It is inconceivable. Uh, that uh, Mitch Firefield and his office, who knew about these leaks that were so damaging to Malcolm Turnbull and knew about the likelihood or the reality of an AFP investigation, it is inconceivable that Mitch Firefield did not tell someone in the Prime Minister's office. Uh, and I say to Mr Turnbull, you need to come clean on this issue. You need to stop dodging legitimate questions because uh, it is quite clear uh, that your minister knew about an AFP investigation, uh, your minister knew about the investigation into damaging documents, documents that showed the truth of Malcolm Turnbull's mismanagement of the NBN. It seems it just fails the pub test that no one in your office was told. I'm happy to take questions. Did the NBN Co ever refer leads to the Federal Police under the Rudd Gillard Rudd government? I like uh, the wording of that question. Uh, uh, not that I can recall, but uh, I'd have to go uh, back and look. The Attorney General at the time, you would know. No, not that I can recall. Uh, you, you just go to the Cabinet Government before. Is, is, um, would an issue like this often come up in Cabinet discussions if, if there was a referral from the Well, the, the, the former Attorney General is probably a better place than I to talk about the ways in which these decisions are made, but I think that the issue here is this. What do we know? We know that the information that was coming out from this whistleblower uh, was enormously embarrassing to Malcolm Turnbull. Uh, what it showed is that the cost of the NBN under him has doubled. What it showed is that uh, uh, the time frame for delivery on the NBN has blown out under him. It showed that he was mismanaging the project. Uh, there's then a, a discussion in November uh, with Minister Fifield, which references the possibility of an investigation, and then there's an AFP investi a referral to the AFP. Well, uh, at which point uh, did uh, uh, Minister Fifield first know? What did his office do about it? But most importantly, why is the Prime Minister dodging questions about when his office knew? Is, is there someone? Uh, is there a serious concern that there may be someone within the government who has access to like, this as yet unannounced? Well. Uh, this is why I started with, our, 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 th with the point I made. We know photos were taken. Uh, we know uh, that those photos were disseminated. Those photos were sent at least to NBN, but we don't know who they were sent to. Well, the government should make clear who they were sent to. The government should tell Australians who got those photos, and the government should make clear that they've been destroyed. Given the documents were subject to parliamentary privilege, does it strike you that there's been a serious breach of AFP? 
Well, look, uh, what I would say about parliamentary privilege is this. I, I saw the Prime Minister today trying to make light of parliamentary privilege. Well, parliamentary privilege isn't the plaything of any government or any political party. It's a principle that's been around for many centuries. It's a principle which is about making sure that Parliament can shine a light in dark places, that whoever's the opposition of the day can shine a light on the truth. Uh, and, and parliamentary privilege is important, and so too are those whistleblowers uh, who have made sure the public are aware of the truth. The ABC reports uh, that the warrant uh, used Section 79 of the Crimes Act to pursue the Labor on their the Labor Party officials that uh, allegedly received the documents. Has this section ever been used before and is it being abused? I mean, if people, the leakers face up to seven years jail and also the receivers, which would mean the Labor Party, also face that jail time as well. Um, Mark, can you comment on that? What we've got here is an extraordinary set of events and we need to focus on what these documents actually are. They are documents which have been uh, progressively put out into the public arena over the last several months. They're a massive embarrassment to Malcolm Turnbull. They're a massive embarrassment because they show that his promises before the last election of delivering fast broadband to every Australian household by the end of 2016 lie in tatters, that his promise of delivering the NBN cheaper is a nonsense because the cost of the NBN delivering the national broadband network to Australians has doubled and it's going to be done slower and it's going to be done in a mismatch of technologies uh, with uh, other revelations such as the purchase of some 1900 kilometres of copper. Uh, that's where we're headed under Malcolm Turnbull's NBN. All of these embarrassments to him uh, what has caused the NBN code to become agitated about documents that have been leaked, uh, all of those embarrassments to Mr Turnbull, none of which he's yet answered, um, are what's prompted this police investigation uh, coming, as we've seen, in the extraordinary way that we have. Uh, what's really concerning is the revelation that an NBN co-employee took photographs during the course of the raid uh, and then transmitted some 30 images of some 32 documents uh, to the NBN Co. That came to light yesterday, uh, and I'd repeat Senator Wong's uh, demand that the government come clean about this matter and absolutely undertake that no use will be made of these documents, indeed that the images will be destroyed. Do you think that the NBN Co's position has become untenable in terms of its impartiality, and was it appropriate for NBN Co to refer these leads, seeing as though you're saying that all they did was embarrass the Turnbull government? Is it appropriate for a, an organisation such as NBN Co to, in, to refer to federal police leads that embarrass a government? Well, what we know is that NBN Co is not impartial. NBN Co is a fully owned government entity. It has two shareholders. They are Matthias Cormann and Mitch Fifield. Uh, it is not impartial, uh, and what it, they have done is sought to refer matters about leaks which embarrass the Prime Minister to the Australian Federal Police. They've also had an employee participate in the raid and, as, as Mark said, take photographs of documents which were subsequently sent back to them. So I think the NBN Co does have questions to answer. I want to come back to something else you were asking, though, and that is about the appropriateness or otherwise of this. All I'd say on that point is this. Uh, I, I would make the point uh, that the government has been prepared to countenance a, a referral to the Australian Federal Police in relation to documents which embarrass the Prime Minister because it exposed his mismanagement. Uh, I wonder whether the government has been as active in pursuing the national security leaks we have seen on the submarines procurement process, on the leaking of a draft defence white paper, on the leaking of a document that had cabinet protected sensitive uh, to Laurie Oaks, which was designed to embarrass the Labor Party. I think the reasonable question for Malcolm Turnbull is this. Uh, if your minister, Mitch Fifield, was prepared to sit down with the NBN and countenance these issues being referred to the AFP, I trust that the leaks to which I have referred, these other leaks, have had a similar sort of treatment by the relevant minister. Who do you feel should be investigating then what's gone on in the last 36 hours, 48 hours? Who's the appropriate person to sort of get to the bottom of, you know, why the NBN staffer was doing what they were doing? Um, and why the AFP allowed it to happen? Well, uh, I think that the issue is for the that the government should stand up and make clear uh, what happened uh, in terms of NBN's involvement. I mean, the NBN is a government entity. Some people have drawn comparisons between this case and um, the number of uh, James 
satisfaction there since I think uh, the short call for a uh, right to stand down while the investigation is ongoing. Do you think that Stephen Conway should similarly stand down while the investigation is ongoing? Uh, no, I don't. Does Mike have confidence in the Commissioner and Andrew Hill? Yes, we do. And uh, Mark, how could you be the Attorney General if you're saying that the raise have undermined confidence in the Andrew Oh, this was a very important point that I was making. Uh, it's concerning to all Australians that to see a police raid on the Commonwealth parliamentary officers occupied by the deputy leader of the opposition in the Senate, uh, that's not something that Australians are used to seeing. And the concern that I expressed was about the possible impact on the Australian Federal Police and confidence that Australians rightly have in the Australian Federal Police. And that's why I congratulated Commissioner Colvin uh, yesterday morning after he came out to give his press conference. Uh, Pro Commissioner Colvin is a professional. He understands the importance of reassuring Australians as to the confidence that they can have in the independence of the Australian Federal Police. Because he's a professional, uh, I'll assume that when he was speaking at his press conference yesterday, uh, he knew nothing at all about the uh, conduct of this NBN Co employee during the course of the search conducted at Senator Conroy's office. Uh, what we heard from Commissioner Colvin, to the contrary, uh, was uh, his concern to respect and protect the claim to parliamentary privilege that was made right at the start uh, of the commencement of the search of Senator Conroy's office. The ANP are only following the word of the law here, aren't they? Like section 17 and Section 79 of the Crimes Act say that if documents are leaked, the AFP has to investigate if it's been referred to. Well, our criticism is, as I've said before, uh, we've had a referral to the AFP by a government-owned company after conversations with a minister uh, in relation to documents that embarrass the Prime Minister. Uh, we look forward to the government being as active uh, in pursuing those documents which, to which I referred earlier, including national security documents which appear to have been provided to the media uh, under Mr Turnbull's government. Mitch Fifield himself has said that the prospect of this investigation and this referral to the AFP was discussed with him a month earlier. I think he has some questions to answer about his involvement. Mr Turnbull has dodged questions today, very clearly, put to him about what his office knew. He claims he didn't know. What did his office know? And as I said, I think it is inconceivable, and it is inconceivable, I, I assume to, to most fair-minded observers, uh, that a Cabinet Minister who was talking to a government entity about leaked documents embarrassing the Prime Minister, that no one in the Prime Minister's office was made aware. Even if we do find out later today or later this week that the Prime Minister's office or the Prime Minister himself knew about the uh, leaks being referred to the AFP, what will you then say is Well, no, I, would not, I think Australians would like the Prime Minister and his ministers to be up front. It's taken uh, many hours for Mitch Fifield to tell the truth. Uh, I think it would be much better if the Prime Minister was up front with people rather than dodging the question. Do you think that uh, Mr Keenan and the Attorney General Joint Prime would be aware of it, considering that they're, I guess, the ministers responsible for the AFP? Well, I look forward to them disclosing what awareness they've had of the investigation today. Just on LGBTI. And we'll leave those uh, pictures there from Labor Senator Penny Wong out of Melbourne discussing the AFP investigation into the leaked documents from the NBN Co. Senator Wong there was suggesting that Mr Turnbull has dodged legitimate questions from the media earlier today over when his office and whether his office knew about this investigation. Senator Wong said that it was inconceivable that the Communications Minister, Mitch Fifield, who has admitted that the NBN had advised him that an AFP investigation was to be happening, inconceivable that he did not let the Prime Minister know about this, did not let the Prime Minister uh, know that, in Senator Wong's words, that there were potentially damaging and embarrassing documents which show Mr Turnbull's mismanagement of the NBN Co. She was also joined there by the Shadow Attorney General who uh, was supporting Senator Wong's claims.